What's up, guys? Welcome back to Eskate Exchange, the podcast where we talk about uh, electric skateboards, M boards, board bumpers, Gecko Derm, the convention, whatever other businesses we come up with in the next little while, it'll be on here. So, um, mostly it's just electric skateboards in general. So, if you're new, welcome. Um, you know, leave a comment down below and introduce yourself. Thank you for watching. This is episode 29, which is awesome. I'm excited that we made it to 29. Uh, in the studio, we've got Jacob. Hey. Milo. And Milo's here too somewhere. <laughs> and then Maddie. Maddie is our producer. So thank you. Thank you for, you know, pushing buttons over there. You got Appreciate Maddie mic'd you. up today again, right? She, yep. She's yep. got a mic. Yep. I do. Yep. She's got one. <laughs> um, so I I had a great morning. I just want to say I woke up at way too early. And usually that's a bad thing. But this time we went on a ride, me and you. And we went yep. out and rode the wetlands, which if you're not from Vegas, it's like an area of the desert that doesn't look like a desert for part of it, which is nice. It's like Area 51 for bike riding. It's it's awesome. Like it's got water, it's got desert, it's got insane hills, it's just it's got scenic views that leads all the way down to a lake. Like it's really cool. Um and that's how we spent our morning. We we put down 26 miles this morning. Yep. Um, on the new boards so you know we're at this point in testing we're at the point where we need to just put a lot of miles on these boards make sure we iron all the nonsense out uh, as fast as we can so we're just going to be putting down like a lot of miles in the next couple of weeks um, trying to get uh, you know trying to experience every little different uh, I guess way of riding that we can like every different uh, terrain every different riding experience or style whatever it yeah is. so we've you know basically gone through every part individually so far so now it's like the whole the whole package right and it's even getting more refined so we were testing bushings today we ran ceramic bearings we we have new seven inch tires so there's things like uh we've kind of taken the next step yep. towards that production level so yep albeit these are still very prototype they're looking already they're pretty better. much they're already looking boards. better just from you know, kind of putting other parts on them, but right, uh, like the motors we have on the seven inch are like, eh, they work, but yep. some days they're a little funky because they were sitting on a shelf for a really long time. But yeah, it's it's okay. Yep, it uh, works. we're also testing a couple different remotes. Like for example, your board has a VX2 Pro. Yep, and so far, perfect. So far, so good. So far, so good. I've been testing the VX1 Pro. I had five cutouts today, <laughs> five. So Terrible. that remote will not make it into production unless for whatever reason, I just have a bad yeah, remote. I don't know. When um, you were going down that hill, like after the first time, I was yep. like, oh man, I really hope that this thing stays connected. Yeah. I. What's interesting is it only ever disconnected. It, first of all, it disconnected at perfect times every single time. I, I was just uh, like coasting. So yeah. and I went to, I would go to hit the throttle and it would just vibrate on me. I'm like, all right, well. Not ideal, but it wasn't like in a, a, a time where I really need the brakes, which is yeah. really more important than anything. But still, though, which is it's so weird, though, because the VX1, like they they uh, the VX1 Pro, they advertise it as like way, way, way better than the VX1. It's got significantly better uh, like uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Connectivity. And I just, I didn't get that experience this time. It's what they say. What they say. But, and I, and I know. do have an early unit. Like they what did is, what, what really is the difference between the pro and the original? I VX believe one? it's simply the receiver. So it's potentially something to be on the better. transmitter too. <laughs> okay. So yeah. it's the same body. It's, it's the same form factor as the VX one, but it's got a little bit better transmitter, a bit better receiver. Yeah. And unfortunately we but, only have one in the shop. I only have one, so I can't even like I can't verify no. that was those results or anything. That's just my experience so far. I'm sure other people will have different experiences. We, and we so. tried some things, you know, where you turn some Bluetooth off, but uh, we also needed to keep Bluetooth on because we were running telemetry on our phones. Right. So it was like, all right, well, if it really is interfering, the reality is other people's. Yeah. They, yeah. They're gonna have their phones or something going. Right. I had headphones on, like. So, you know, we kind of turned some of that off, but it yep. didn't really seem to matter. Yeah. He still had, I think, two drops at like when we were doing that. So it was like, yeah. well, turn it all back on. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't want to finish his last five miles. 
Right. So my guess, honestly, is that I, I might just have an early unit. Maybe it's maybe it's totally fine. Maybe being dramatic, but so far that's that remote's probably not going to get offered yeah. um, on our boards. But what will though is the VX2 Pro. That one's been great. Right. I have literally had no dropouts at all in our area so far. Yeah, and also I'm going to throw the puck receiver in. Yep. Mine, so we'll have yeah. What we realized is two. we run the VX2 Pro on the UART port, um, which is the digital signal. And then we use uh, the the puck goes on the PPM port, which is the analog signal. So you could throw literally two receivers in your board and then just have two remotes and not have to like shift it and change it every Maybe time. Maybe that solves our problem of like how we build the four wheel drive. That's a whole nother topic. Yeah, that's a whole nother topic. Whole nother yeah. Topic. yeah. Um, but anyway, so which will be fun though, because then we can really test different remotes without having to open and close the board a hundred different times, which yeah. is cool. Um, so anyway, so that was the interesting findings this morning, but. Although I, I will say this, it is the most comfortable ride or I felt the most comfortable on a board that I ever have ever this morning. Yeah, that was great. It was a great ride. Um, and that's a pretty intense ride. Like I, I know you guys aren't like 99% of you guys who are watching do not live here in Henderson or Las Vegas. So you guys don't know what we're talking about, but it's got these just insane. Like if you come to, how East would you Gate describe Con, it? You'll, you'll know next year. Yeah. How, if you come to Eastgate con next year, we're going to do a big group ride. I think yeah. at the wetlands at one of the nights. Somewhere. We did it last. We did it this last one. It was, we, yeah. we were all incognito about it. We thought it was just like, Oh, uh, there's like six or seven of the homies going out. Yep. And all of a sudden we got bombarded. Well, I think we talked about it, but yeah. like got taken over by all the bikes. So I think we'll but, try to organize better. Yeah. But it, it's just got these insane Hills. It's like you have Hills, you've got, cracks in the road yep. but it's good asphalt you know so you you're not just like experience a little bit of everything road yeah you you kind of experience um all the things you normally would right so take that for what, well, for yeah, what, it's what worth. does that mean we're being so descriptive i know would, yeah but uh anyways it was just i don't know i just felt so locked in today the bushings are phenomenal the riptide bushings are awesome so We'll have those on our site eventually. Yeah. We'll have a couple of custom kits we're working on. Yeah, I think so we've that's narrowed, fun. Narrowed that down to the two kits. So that'll, yeah. That'll so, but I think we'll still offer the third one. I think so. Like I really, so I'm only uh, technically I, I, I think my weight would put me in the middle. Right. There's, there's three hardnesses. There's hard, medium and soft, whatever. Um, obviously the harder you go, the more stable, but less carvy. And then the softer you go, uh, less stable and more whatever. Maybe I said that backwards. But anyway, the harder you are, the more stable you are. I wasn't paying attention, honestly. I was <laughs> thinking of something uh, totally different. No, in my you're head good. Right now. Um, but I actually prefer. So I think my weight would put me in the middle. But I actually think I really like the hardest bushings, yeah. um, and because there's still plenty carvy. It's double kingpins, but it's like, uh, you know, really stable for me. I had yeah, and, yeah, and, and and realistically though, the point of testing is to not ride what's comfortable for you. Right, you have to experience all of the different feels so right i'm actually riding the medium which would be totally wrong for right. me and i enjoyed it a lot i was doing you know high 20s hit 30 and yeah i felt completely stable yeah it was good so i can imagine you on being on a harder one right you know so like then we'll have to trade and then we'll have to do these wheels the combinate the list we talked about yeah. the other day was like oh yeah yeah we, we need to try it on sixes yeah, we do. We need it on sixes with this gear, that gear. That so there's yeah. the combination is probably like fifty. Right, right. Because if you do every single different wheel wheel type plus we're every single tired. different gear type, like my feet are gonna be tired. Dude, right? my feet were numbed this morning. Yeah. It was insane. Um, we're running out of time too because the freaking heat. Yeah. So we went at we were we were wheels up at six thirty out of your driveway. Yep. And. When we got done, we were sweating. Yeah, <laughs> it's hot. We were like, oh, dang, it's hot already. Yeah, and that's and it's it's like, but before we know it, like in a month, it'll be ninety degrees at six thirty. Yeah, you know it's hot when it's a hundred degrees at midnight. Yeah. that's when you know that it's right. like you're in the thick of summer because that happens a couple days out of the summer. Yep, where it's midnight and it's still a hundred degrees out. It's yep. like, oh geez, you know the next morning it's gonna be one hundred seventeen out. Roasting. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and then it's like I'm not gonna ride in that. I just are, don't. I, there's just no point. We need to get a little a little kitty pool and put it up at the front of the warehouse. <laughs> and Milo will jump into it. We'll just yeah. like dip our toes in. Oh and god, we'll just laptop. yeah, we'll just, we'll sit on our on our laptops answering emails. So they're at the pool. And imagine our, our UPS guy showing up. Just dude, like, he what? would roast <laughs> us so bad. Our UPS Jeff, shout out to Jeff. Yeah, he, he brings all dude. your guys' skate parts here. Man, he um, was on one today, dude. Um, so this weekend, if you're listening to this the day it comes out, and I hope you are. Um, meaning this came out Saturday. Tomorrow, Sunday, uh, you and I will be in Oceanside for the big group ride there. Right. 
Um, so we're excited to kind of like bring the new boards out and like have them participate in a, in a group ride. I think that'll be fun. I'm yeah. excited to see how they match up. These are version uh, 0. 0.75. They're so close. <laughs> They're so close, honestly. Um, there's, there's not much that will be changing. It's just things will might get a little bit better quality. Yeah, but other refinement. than that, like the parts are pretty much locked. Yeah. Like it's just about producing them in a better way. But anyways. Yeah. So the ride, um, but it, it's like a big collab ride. So yep. SD skate, um, you have Eastgate IE, which is the okay. Empire Group guys. Okay, and then I think Illicit LA is on there, so he's gonna bring up the LA uh, bike groups. Cool. And I want to say there might have been like one more kind of you know group that was involved, but I was supposed to look at the flyer before we sat down and I forgot. Oh well, well, um, okay. but we jumped in as a sponsor for Board Bumpers. We'll have uh some some goodies there. We'll have some goodies actually with Gecko Derm too. We have some. Skins. Oh sweet. Just I think M boards is bringing a few things. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna pack the truck of stuff and boards, and yeah, um, it sounds like it'll be you know like a normal two hour ride or so. I, I think we know this ride. We've done it. We just did it six months ago or something. Right. Um. But and then they kind of hang out after they barbecue, and it'll be cool to to just shoot the just shit chill. for a bit. Yeah, but it's gonna be another. It'll be a it'll be a quick trip. <laughs> yeah, a long day because we're gonna go. We're driving up Sunday morning. We're driving back Sunday night. Yeah, so it's a five hour drive. We so. will see. We will see how that goes. But um, anyways, so uh, I want we'll just move around to our next topic. This is insane. So there's new batteries coming out already. Yeah. Again, and we just I feel like we all just finally made the shift to P forty two A's, and now we've got P forty five B's coming out, which yeah. is exciting because it's like they're maturing that that selby loves so much just you know one more generation so um they're not even out yet i think they're the specs are out yeah but they're I, not I heard like this summer maybe some retailer yeah. distributors or whatever they're kind of called so my guess is i'll go over the specs one second but my guess is uh, the industry will will probably shift to those but we'll see them interchange with a lot of p42a's because realistically right the same shit it's just sure. a little bit better um, it's be availability costs and then yeah like, does it need it and yeah. see this is what i hope so let me get through the specs first seven percent more capacity so instead of 4200 million hours it's 4500 million hours so it's like a little bit extra but what's interesting though is it it supports faster charging up to 3c right. charging um, and 22% less voltage sag, which is, that's exciting. So that's the one at first I was like, so tell me what that actually means. Yeah. How, how do you quantify 22%? Right. So my guess is in like a lab format where you take a cell and you hit it at 45 amps, you're going to see some kind of voltage drop. And you of do some that kind. continuous? Continuously just like pull for 45 10 minutes for, or something or, for, or whatever. Right. Um, and then, then they're measuring what, what the, and then they'll probably do like a minute or two of 45 amps. Then they'll stop and see what the re voltage returns to. Um, because as you hit it with amperage, the voltage will drop a little bit. P42As are great though. Like they don't have that much sag. I mean, all cells have sag. That's just yeah. how it goes. Um, but they're, they perform really well. But my guess is that, um, if you're dropping like a volt or something on a single cell, you maybe you're dropping 0.8 volts now. Okay. or something um i don't know exactly how they did their testing that's just i assume that's what right something similar to that is how they're quantifying it um but what mean what it means is that your volt your sag will be less by 22 percent. so there, there we go take, take that for what it's worth i don't know how to quantify it here sitting here in my I chair i can't think of anything that is better with more sag you know like <laughs> right yeah i don't know um Hands, boobies no, nothing. <laughs> nothing is good with more sag right um, but this is what I'm more excited about is if the P45Bs come out, what does that do to the price of P42As? Does that, that's like the old news. Like, right. Are they going to be cheaper now? Because that would be nice. Or are we going to go through the same thing where they just stop making them? Right. Or are we going to be like, are they going to go, no, we're not making those anymore. Here's right. the Bs and you can pay a dollar extra for each of them. Right. Because this oh. is a Molisell battery. It is a Molisell battery. Yeah, it's, it's the same a company. Molisell battery. So, and I reached out to them because I was trying to buy cells directly from them. I didn't want to buy it through, you know, a third party. I wanted to buy them directly from them. And they were sold out through like 2023 or something. I was oh, like, wow. okay, well, <laughs> there Much goes that. Idea. So, yeah. So we've been buying them from a from an authorized uh, distributor, but uh, still, though, I'm interested to see like, are they? So it sounds like my point in saying that is, I, it sounds like they're already. At capacity they're already producing 
more cell or as many cells as they possibly can and they're still sold out or so they say i'm sure there's always some sort of secret stash you know going out on the side it just if you're big enough They'll probably yeah, write back yeah. and be like, hey, you know, I mean, I mean who we, knows? we found a few, you know, yeah. like, we only like, found 100,000. I was whatever. asking for like 10 to 20,000 cells. Right. So that's that should be big enough. Should be big. But enough, But if a distributor is picking up half a million, like yeah. I, I know I the distributor that we have ha- has over 100,000 in stock there you right go. now. That's wild. So it's like, oh, maybe our maybe they were like, w- wasn't worth their time or something. Well, I don't know. A million cells. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, but, and I honestly don't even realistically think we would have even done 10,000 cells. I would just threw a number out there because, yeah, we just well, re- we'll see what happens. We just resold them. <laughs> yeah. We might've just resold some cells or just, yeah. Um, put them on the used site. Yeah. Right. Just brand new cells. That's, that's like the saying right here lately. Yeah. Well, where are these? I don't know. Put them on the used yeah, site. We just, we, Mike, if, these if are we, brand new. I, I don't know. Put them on the used site. It, if we, if you guys haven't checked the used site out or the used section out, you really should. Um, we just keep finding like brand new stuff that we just don't sell anymore. I'm gonna, and like, we just throw it up in, there like, for like half off or a bag more. Bag of chips or something, <laughs> just something or ridiculous on there. Just a bag of gummy bears. Here you go. A couple of missing. Here's a half drink Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> it's used. I mean, come on. It is. It is. Yeah. Oh, geez, right. it'd be so funny though. Um, Who was telling me that something that they like, some company put up an empty box. Online. Yes, that was me. Yeah. Uh, the the oh, okay. Oh. This is amazing. So, I, if you guys, some of you guys might know this company. It's called D Brand. Um, they make like skins for phones and Xboxes and iPads and like electronic devices. Okay. They just make these beautifully cut like 3M skins. Um, and they have this like cult following, and it's almost like a joke to the point when they know they have this following. So like they. For April Fool's Day or some day, I don't remember. I think it was April Fool's Day. They sold like four by four empty boxes, like empty cardboard boxes for five dollars. People oh, bought them. Man. They that sold is, out like a thousand of them or something so like that. So wild. And Good the description is literally like they were making fun of you for buying it in the description, but they sold out. They just know you're gonna. They buy just know it they're gonna it buy. Showed it. up. Yeah. It's like. And I think there's an FAQ. It's like, what if my box doesn't arrive? They're like, too bad or yeah. something. Like, suck it. Yeah, it's like, but they sold them. Which, at the end of the day, by the time you ship a box and right. put a label on it, they made no money. There might have been a fortune cookie in it too. Or something, something yeah. like or so, a golden like, ticket in one of them. They, yeah, like who knows? They might have packed them full of some nonsense or right. something. But they claimed it was air. That's like it was funny. just nothing. I was like, how? But you know, if like Tesla did that, people would buy it too. Okay, so we want to do a couple extra segments. I think we kind of like our shows. Our show has been relatively misguided. Like we just talk about nonsense for an hour and yeah. hope people watch. But we're trying to get it like our show a little bit more structured, add a little bit more content for you guys to watch. So maybe it's a little bit more entertaining. We want to grow the show. So we have a couple new segments we want to introduce. We'll be introducing new segments um, like probably every week for the next couple of weeks until we have like six to ten new segments and we'll like pick and choose from three or four of them each show yeah um so we have a couple uh, that we want to go through this week one of them the first one will be uh escape myths which is just like p- things that people generally believe that aren't necessarily true or are kind of true but not really and we want to like dive more into that right so you came up with a good point uh the other day and you said that more wattage equals more power. Right. And we can generally more agree power. that statement is true. However, what's interesting about that statement is if you go to all these different manufacturers and you go to buy an electric skateboard, one of the first things you look at is well, price, of course. But then we look at like some of the actual specs. So like one of the main main ones is the wattage of motors. Right. And a lot of people get very hung up on well, this board's got, you know, two 2,000-watt motors, but this board's got two 2,500-watt yeah, motors. And this is why it always got me at first, was because when they would say that, in my head, being sort of a car guy, yep. I would immediately put that into, like, horsepower. Right, you convert and it I, to our yeah, own version of horsepower. My, I'd be like, oh, damn, this thing's got 3,000 watts. Yep. It, so in my brain, I'm like, that's, that thing rips. let's say that's 300 horsepower. And then if somebody says they have 5,000 watts, I'm like, damn, like, that thing is going to... You know, it's really going to haul right. ass. But then the reality is... The reality is that's... A lot of those numbers are bullshit because here's why. It, yeah. The numbers on the motors, yes. If, you know, if they have two 2,500-watt motors, that's 5,000 watts, and that's what those motors are capable of, 
Those specs are correct. However, you are bottlenecked six other ways before that, that that wattage even matters. Right. So if your ESC is not outputting 5,000 watts worth of current, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Boom. If your battery can't that, handle it, it doesn't it. matter. Nothing past that. That's Literally, that. you don't even have to talk any, like... The motors don't matter. Like, the that, motors do not matter as much as everyone thinks they do. Now, here's what I will say. Here's the only benefit of, like, uh, people obsess over motor size as well, and that's really not... It's the size is literally just packing more watts into. I a fell can. into that trap. Yep. So the only thing I'll say is that a a a two thousand watt motor and a one thousand watt motor, if they're both being run at the same current out of the same ESC off the same battery, the two thousand watt motor will run cooler, thus being more efficient and performing better. That's the only reason that I would maybe go for one motor over the other, given all the other specs being the same. Now, if we're talking between 2,500 watts and 2,000 watts, that you ain't going to feel the difference. The temperatures right. are going to be pretty much the same. Like, it's not, eh, it's, like, not worth even obsessing over. Uh, but everybody, or not everybody, but a lot of people get really hung up on some specs, but they're not really considering the whole picture and the other bottlenecks that you may experience um, alongside of each part. Um, and we understand also, like, that the argument is, well... Yeah, but my ESC puts up. But I get it. There oh, are ones it, yeah. out there that can do that. But for the majority, for the production boards that right. we're seeing hit the floor, we are not talking DIY in this aspect. DIY, no, no. DIY is like, it shouldn't even be DIY. It should be do whatever the fuck you want. Right. Because like, that's usually what happens. The, yeah. you, you know, how many already people are, or not already, but still people using Tupperware enclosures. Oh, yeah. You know, with storm cores. And, and <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh, that's fun. That's like, weird. What yeah. are you doing? Why are you doing that? They bolted in a heat sink in a Tupperware. Like, what are you doing? That right. doesn't, that doesn't spent, do They guys. spent a thousand dollars on their bill yeah, and they, ten cents. they didn't even want to put it they in a real enclosure. They stole their mom's cookies. Yeah. You know, and like, just like didn't at the give time it when I did it, no, literally nobody was selling enclosures. Right. That was not a thing. You could not just go and buy an Enlogic skateboard enclosure. So we had to either make one right. or like steal a container. So, so we're really, you know, kind of looking at it from like a production aspect. Like yeah. someday maybe ESCs are pushing to that limit. But uh, if a mo if motors just continue to increase via wattage. Right. That doesn't necessarily or, mean anything. Yeah, it's not really going anywhere. Right, because, like, again, like, you can throw... If you threw a 63100 motor on your Evolve GTR, it's not really It's not really going to... I mean, it will perform a bit better, right, than your 5055. suck your battery drive But up. it's not going to do much. Right. It's not... You're not going to see that that much of a, of a jump as right. you should because those two motors are drastically different, and if you actually fed the motors what they wanted... Right. The 63100 would destroy the 5055s, yeah. but in that case, the ESC and the batteries, they're just, they're not offering enough for those motors to even be worth it. Even, even, um, I, like I said, I fell into that trap. I bought the 63100 and I was all like excited. Like, yep. look at these boats on the back. They're going to, you know, haul ass. And then you were like, well, I mean, it's not really going to do anything <laughs> different. I have my jaws. Like, wait, what do you mean? Why not? And then I had another buddy tell me, he's like, yeah, with that setup, like there's, yeah, you're, you're not even getting close to maximizing those things. So yeah. you have to like, fully well, saturate a motor first. So now they're on the use site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brand new motors like, on the use site. Unless you're saturating your motors, then that's the only reason why you'd want to move up. Which I guess I thought me, my riding style being heavier, like I just wanted to keep them cooler. Well, and that's, like, that's a know, genuine thing. And that was a, that is what I was going for. Yeah. Uh, flip side being. I'm just overheating my ESC now because my motors are lasting longer and <laughs> right. my ESC is like, wait a minute, it's 140 out right now. Like right. it's freaking hot on this asphalt. Yeah. So Right. Again, so like again, of, if heat is what you're after, then then you can throw everything I just said out your out the window. Right. But if you're not overheating your motors, then I wouldn't stress over it. Sure. Unless you live in Vegas, you're probably not. Or unless you're hitting like just stupid hills for miles at a time, then yeah. maybe. But other than that, I really wouldn't uh stress over it too much. Another thing people get really twisted in their head is they go, well, my motors say they, you know, they, my ESC, my motors will want, or can push 70 amps each. I need a, I need a, mo a battery that can handle 140 amps. Like, uh, but what's interesting is what people don't know. And what they don't realize is, uh, the amperage coming out of your battery pack does not directly trans translate to the amperage going into your motors. Um, 
Kind of. So I'll kind of explain. So So here's so here. So everyone, get your pencil and paper out. I'm gonna explain something to you. If you've got a battery that can handle 50 amps, it can push 100 amps to your motors. And I'll explain kind of the reasoning. So I found a I found a post that was that had that worded it well. Like I I knew the concept, but I couldn't find like a good written out description of why it was this way. Um, but here's a good thing. So one of the amazing, one of the amazing features of the VESC, uh, is that even if your battery has a current limit set to 20 amps, it is actually possible to have a higher current inside the motor, but only when they are spinning at low RPMs. This is a great feature because it means you have a very strong torque at low RPMs, which is important for starting up as the motor RPM increases closer closer to its maximum RPM, the current inside the motor will be reduced and be limited and or determined by the battery current the battery current limit that is set. So what that means is at low RPMs, you can you by by the time it gets converted in the VESC, I, I don't like that's the part I don't really know is how it goes, how we're multiplying it. Yeah. Um like what math happens inside this uh ESC. But I do understand the concept of it is that at low RPMs you can push a lot more amperage to your motors. You're like converting a 20 amp uh, current to something higher uh, just because your RPMs are so low. Now that, I don't know how or why this happens, but um, it's voodoo. It's, it is strange, but it is a true story. So people, you don't have to. I think we have some probably knowledgeable listeners. Oh, absolutely. So maybe, you guys maybe, would fill us in on this yeah, one. Yeah, help, help fill us in there uh, yeah. with uh, filling in kind of the segment part but you know we really want more interaction also like yeah knowing what you guys think and and what you guys experience so uh as we come up with these segments just fill in you know the yeah. blanks either on your end or things that you've experienced email us hit us on social media hit us on the right. youtube channel right now like put in your comment right now what is an eskate myth that you believe yeah and we'll either talk about it on the show Yep. Or we'll make fun of you and say you've lost your mind. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, but it, but what's interesting is so people are obsessed over how many amps can I draw? How many can I? Will this battery work? Will that battery work? And the answer is like you you actually get away with remarkably like you don't need a ton actually. Yeah. Like the battery that's sitting in our board right in our new boards right now is a 12 s 4 p, which is the 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 half pack that we're well, we will we will be doing a 12 s 8. Right. But it's 12 s 4. It'll output. 45 times four, so 180 amps. The most I pulled today was 60. You're weak, bro. 60. And we and we were ripping up yeah. these monster yeah, hills we today. So it's like, I think people obsess over like, well, I got it, you know, I got to have hundreds of amps at my disposal, which yeah. some of you guys, sure, because some of these builds are these absolutely are like, insane. We're talking like race boards yeah. and or I'm talking the average tanks. user does yeah. not require this sig- like insane amount of power yeah. to handle their 6384s or 6374s or whatever it is. Like, yep. um, now, here, the only time you would, well, the only time where you're going to start getting limited by your battery is once you are approaching a top speed and maybe you are, are starting on a little bit of an incline. Then your, your RPMs are high and your motors are asking for even more energy or more current that's now not available. Right. But other than that, you're good. So you're hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this doesn't confuse the hell out of you guys, but what I'm pretty much saying is, I mean, I kind of hope it does, but maybe <laughs> what I'm pretty <laughs> much saying, I'm thoroughly confused. Right, yeah. But. It doesn't, it, it doesn't really quite make sense, but it is the math does check out. I found a couple graphs online. It does make sense, but I don't know how to explain it yeah. in a mathematically correct way. I believe you. All I, all I can say is though, that 20 amps, it, if you have a battery that can handle 60 amps, it doesn't mean you can own that. Your motors will only get 30, but cause I think people were struggling with the idea of in the vest tool, you can set your current limits on your motors to like 60 or 70. But if your battery can only put 30, they're like, how does that, how does that make right. sense? But by the time it goes into the vest, it gets converted to a different calculation it's, of power. That's, that's voodoo. Yeah. It doesn't make sense, but it's, it's, it's the there. voodoo ESC project. Yep. That's what the V right. stands for. The, oh, that's what, what it does. does the v stand- v, okay. The vest escape myth. Vest three vest stands for Vader. Yes. That's electric. What I thought. Uh, Somebody told me speed variable. Mm. I was like variable. No, but I that mean, would be a kinda, good one too. It kind of fits, but so Vetter, I mean, it's V E D D E R, yeah. and it's named after the creator of it, Benjamin Vetter. 
Vader and where better. is this dude now? Benjamin I don't know where he is now, him. but he's actively works on the Vesk firmware and like all that's that. That's a whole nother segment. Like, so that's the whole where thing. Where are they now? Eastgate, yeah. where are they? Where are, now? They, are they now? That would be good. <laughs> that would we've be interesting. Where Where is Mike now? I'm <laughs> sitting right here. Uh, but so anyways, don't obsess over some of these numbers too much. Like you guys should look at some stuff, look at them and, and understand them. But like understand that there are bottlenecks everywhere and even some bottlenecks that you think would exist like the battery motor thing no. actually isn't a bottleneck just know every time you fix a bottleneck you're just you created create another, another one you created one. another so one yep at some point you're you you hit an end and you you'll just start over you yep. know and and that's the ex excessive or obsessive, obsessive is a better word to yep. just like just build the damn thing and go ride it yeah when it blows up Figure out why it blew up, and yep. if you need to make an improvement, like I'm being a, a bit, you know, extreme. Like yep. I don't expect it to blow up. No, we no, don't no. want anybody's sports to blow up, and I never want that. But like, just go ride it, and if yep. you hate it that much, then change it. Yeah, like come on, man. Like, no, but like, because I think much of the much of the companies right now, it's all just a giant pissing contest of who can put who could slap the most. The biggest number on every category and it's just stupid to me right like it just doesn't make any sense to me like why are you advertising 3000 watt motors when we all know that you have 1500 to 2000 coming out of your esc what is what's the point it doesn't make I'd, sense I'd also like some of the you know the the, st the specs or whatever coming out right. on these and like an onboard zeus is doing 40 miles an hour yeah why doesn't onboard post that video I don't think. Why well, haven't I ever seen an own board employee doing 40 miles an hour on the board? Because <laughs> they know better. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Why would they I? Know, they know better. So yeah. even like, okay, here you go. We're going to give you this sport that does 40 miles an hour, but we have no clue what it's going to do at 40, right? Like yep. none of us here have ridden it that yeah. fast. Well, that's and, what and we're and about made, to like, do with our board. I, I, I did it today, right? So I'm like cruising at 30. I pulled away a little bit and I'm like, yeah, not today. No. This is not about to happen. I'm not even halfway into the throttle. No. I've got just a helmet on and my shades. Yeah. And I'm like, no, not not today. Like we need the leathers for this one. Right. I, I we're at the nuts. point we're at the point with our new board where the top speed, I think we're just gonna go we're not sure. It it'll be like like sort of Lacroix esque, like if you look up Lacroix's site, they'll basically say more than you more need. than you need because yeah. that's the reality. At right. the end, of, you can gear it, you can change a million things. That you know, it's that pissing contest again of like, yep. just go ride the damn thing, right? Just ride it, you know, and be happy with what you have. But because my guess is like, so if you actually, if you guys have never used this before planning a build, uh, eSkate Calc uh, dot it. Nope. Yeah, and that kind of like give you a. So Eskate Calc. What does that Google tell it? you? Yeah. Calc. Eskate. It. So what that means is you can sit here and type in like all we'll your. Throw specs. a link up for that one. Yep. So like I have a, we have a twelve S board. We have one hundred ninety kV motors. We have eighty five percent motor efficiency. I mean, it's probably higher to be honest, but we're just gonna leave it at default. Um, then like on our six, our seven inch wheels, right? Yep. We got a hundred and. 50 75. 75 yep 150 75s <laughs> uh wheel pulley teeth would be 58 so like sorry guys i'm just doing the math really quick and i'm going to tell you what our so it estimates our board to be, have a 43 mile an hour top speed based on the I specs i give it. it i don't doubt it now it says weighted 37 so in my experience it's somewhere a mix of both so like it's like an average between mathematical top speed and a weighted top speed so it's like 40 yeah and i'd believe that but like you easily could gear that down we have 45 t pulleys now your torque would go way down but that would give you a 47 mile an hour top speed like on double king like it doesn't make any sense it doesn't matter and and the truth is batteries and the motors and the storm core is so efficient yep uh if i were to run that setup on a 10s 4p it's right so like insane. a battery of a year or two ago yeah no chance i'd have made it two miles i'd have overheated yeah I, every time i'd have overheated within right. two or three miles and i had to wait and start all over yep the board wouldn't have liked it i'd a lot but like the board is so efficient now and dude you know, not the just new yours packs but like are so all, yes efficient. exactly all of them and the esc has, has gotten so much better yeah motors grew everything got to a very efficient point right now 
So I Where so after our ride, which was a very very hilly ride on six inch tires, I did twenty one watt hours a mile, yeah. which is very good, and that's again an extremely hilly situation. So I think we'd be uh, around nine, eighteen to nineteen if it was like just regular riding. I was pulling over 260 pounds today with the backpack yeah. and the wheels and all the tools and the drinks. So right, and I was I that's why I said at the beginning of the ride I said I know we'll get 20 if I get 25. Yep, I'll be like really stoked with that much weight. Yep, and we pulled up to the car. I had 0.1 percent. <laughs> yeah, like I was basically at the cutoff. Yeah, I mean it was probably like still 25. like five percent, but yeah, I think it was just under load. It didn't like it, but uh. It was 20, 26 miles. So. Yep. So at twelve us eight people double. I, I, what I believe though is I think it'll you'll get more. more yeah. Because they'll have less voltage issues there. Correct. So I had a ten S eight P and I always felt that it was like supercharged. It was more it than felt double. Faster. It went farther. Like it yeah. just was. It was very weird. Yeah. So at twelve us eight P will easily be able to do on all terrains easily fifty miles on a single charge easily. Good. good. And it's probably gonna be more. Yeah. I like. I don't know how we're gonna have to break that range test up at multiple days i think but we'll see well we're gonna hit the the adventure trails loop oh yeah that's we have right another we have another loop out here that's like 36 miles yeah that's true and we'll actually have to do the wetlands and that trail oh geez that's gonna be insane all right well i mean well we'll, we'll figure it out we gotta <laughs> do like that dr- i guess i'm, I'm dreading, I'm dreading it, but that I'm already also, like very excited we just are running out of time to do it yeah it's, it's just getting really hot really so, so we'll have our custom nickel for our new batteries pretty soon and then once we have that i'll build some two yeah, 12 we, 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 we did um we were talking about eastgate myths and bottom line is don't obsess over numbers but you know obviously you have to look at them but like don't obsess over them because yeah. A lot of times it doesn't matter. I would I would much rather buy a board that you know is like made well instead of buying a board for the specs. If yep. That makes sense. So, anyways, leave your guys' opinions and like uh, input on anything we've been saying in the comments because like that, we want it to be more of a you know we want more engagement. We want you yep. guys to share your opinions and like have your voice heard and all that. But uh. Anyways, so what are your myths? Yeah, please your, for the question of the day, what what what's a myth that you th- believe that most people believe? Maybe, maybe you don't believe. Yeah, it. I mean, like, I don't want to say we're sticking to facts, right? But maybe less of just you know opinion. Maybe we're, it's we're like try to give us something concrete to say, you know, with with kind of the battery situation. We were, right. we, we could like pull up data and we could actually say, look, this is this is factual. Um, to a certain point of like your own preference. Right. There's not a whole lot of opinion, but so, so yeah, more, right. You know, factual type stuff. Again, we're probably going to read them all. We're going to laugh at you know, yeah, hopefully, hopefully everybody. all of them and yeah. Um, any engagement. Well, yeah. Come on. And then home. if you guys have any ideas of what you guys want to see or hear on the, on the channel at all, I'll of course put them down there. And, uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching and, uh, you know, we'll see you next week for episode 30. So. Milo says, get out of my office. Yeah, Milo's ready for a nap, and he I'm wants us to nap. shut the lights off. So there's that. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. See you. We'll see you next week.